America and the promise of America is yet to be realized. I am not ready to give up this country without a fight. And it matters not just to Americans, but to the rest of the world. My name is Alicia Garza. I'm one of the co-creators of Black Lives Matter, the global network comprised of 42 chapters of Black folks and our allies who are all focused on combating anti-Black racism and state-sanctioned violence. Black Lives Matter was started in 2013 after George Zimmerman was acquitted in the murder of Trayvon Martin. The outrage over the fatal shooting of 17-year-old Trayvon Martin is spreading now around the country. Protesters are calling for the arrest of the shooter, Neighborhood Watch volunteer George Zimmerman. There is breaking news in Sanford, Florida. The jury has reached a verdict in the murder trial of George Zimmerman. He is the Neighborhood Watch coordinator who shot the unarmed teenager Trayvon Martin to death last year. We, the jury, find George Zimmerman not guilty. After the jury made the announcement, I wrote a love letter on Facebook to black people. And after I cried myself to sleep that night, I woke up and I saw that it had gone viral. What that meant to me was that it resonated with people who were looking for something different. And I started to think about the possibilities. Could we do something else with all of that energy so that we could actually change our conditions? so we could change the way that things are. More protests tonight in a St. Louis suburb after a police officer shot and killed an unarmed teenager this weekend. A year later, Mike Brown was killed in Ferguson, Missouri, and there was an uprising. What began as a peaceful night of protest shifted into yet another street battle as protesters began launching bottles in the direction of officers. We've got people standing here, kneeling in the street, and they are offering themselves up to be arrested. Black Lives Matter was kind of taken up by folks in that community to express the world that they wanted to live in. And Ferguson catalyzed the rest of the world to take action. And so you see this real convergence of a online platform where people could get information and share and organize to do things differently in their communities. And that's kind of how the movement itself erupts. And that's where we get to today. What about people that don't connect or relate to this phrase, Black Lives Matter, or understand it, what would you suggest or what would you say to those people? I mean, first and foremost, I would listen. We have to face the ways in which we haven't been told the truth about what's happening. In Texas, for example, there was a change that reclassified slavery as people coming to the United States to work. That matters in terms of how people understand their world. So we have to be patient, but also really firm. There was a time when my own father didn't understand it, right? He's like, all lives matter, you know? Why are we separating people? And we had to have a conversation that was safe enough to face what it is that many of us don't want to face because it's really painful and sometimes we feel powerless to change it. When was the first time you experienced racism? When I was in fifth grade, and I had a teacher who walked by my desk, and she grabbed my hands, and she said, why are your palms so much lighter than the rest of your skin? And I went home, and I said to my mom, why did my teacher say that? And she didn't know what to say. She said, don't pay it any mind. Just keep doing what you're doing. 
pay attention to your studies. That's the first time I can remember. What do you think about Donald Trump's America? For me, there's a lot of parallels between Donald Trump becoming president and George Zimmerman being acquitted of murder. When I turn on the news every day and I follow who's being picked for this administration, and as somebody who has studied the right wing for a long time, I'm very clear that the right wing agenda in this country is not just something I politically disagree with. It is something that threatens to end humanity as we know it. People who don't believe that the earth is warming and that that has impacts and implications on whether or not people live. People who don't believe that women should be allowed to decide if and when we want to have families. Folks who don't believe that people who make this country run every single day deserve to live in dignity and deserve to have protections in the workplace. How do we actually make America great again? I spend a lot of time thinking about that too. <laughs> the world that my mom grew up in, she knew everybody on her block, every single person, and they knew her. We don't live in that world anymore where people take care of each other, not because they're a Democrat or a Republican, but because your families have known each other and it's the right thing to do. And I think the first step to making America great again is like getting to know your neighbors, <laughs> getting to know how they got there, why they stay, what they fear, what they dream of, and being in a commitment to helping them reach their goals spreading that person to person, block by block, family by family. How bad do you think things will get? Honestly, it's getting worse by the day. In the last month since Donald Trump was announced as president, there's been over a thousand reported hate crimes. The only thing that will stop that is us. Everybody takes responsibility for governing. It's a mandate for everyone. There are so many heroes out there. It gives me hope that this will be something that we read about 50 years from now and say, Whew, sounded like a rough period. So it's time to build the opposition. <laughs>